Hey, Number Crunchers. It's good to be back with you. This is another in a series of videos about mathematics, and today I'd like to talk to you about how to solve differential equations. Now, whatever else you've heard, a differential equation is just an equation with a slope in it. It's not scary. And the reason we care about differential equations is most physical laws are described in terms of differential equations. So f equals ma, really a differential equation. Watch. We learned this in physics, probably, or some science class somewhere. Force equals mass times acceleration, right? Well, that's not really what Newton wrote. In fact, he, what he wrote was probably closer to this. He didn't use this notation, but that's, that's pretty close. So force equals mass times the change in velocity over the change in time. Well, that's a slope. That makes this a differential equation. Now, because differential equations have slopes in them, their solutions are functions, not numbers. Numbers don't have slopes. Okay, big idea here is when you're solving a differential equation, you're trying to find a function that makes the equation true, not just a number. Right? So if we're going to do this, it probably helps to have a differential equation to start with. So I just made one up. Now, I don't know if this has any physical significance, but the big idea here is the slope of the function that solves the differential equation is equal to the square root of the function itself plus x. That's it. y of x, that thing right there, that's the solution. What we're trying to do is find that. Now, this is a particular kind of equation called an ordinary differential equation because it only has one independent variable. And in order to, to uh, completely solve this, we need to know one point on the curve. There's a whole class of curves that will solve this. We need to know one of the points on the curve. And if we know that one, then we'll know which curve to pick out. So it's usually an initial condition. So in this case, I'm going to say at x equals 0, y equals 1. Oops. Equals 1. Or y of 0 equals 1. They, they mean the same thing, but that's the initial condition. If I know one point, I can figure out the whole rest of the curve. So that's what we're about to do. Now, there's two ways to do this. One is analytically, and if you've ever taken a differential equations class, probably that's what you did. There's all these different possible solution methods for differential equations. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, and it begins to look like kind of a catalog of solutions. I, I, I was never able to make much sense out of it. So another way to do this is something called finite differences. And this works all the time. This always works. So as an engineer, that, I like that quite a lot. But all you got to do, I'm gonna, maybe I'll put this up here so we can use it later. And just to remind you. That's our initial condition. All I got to do is finite difference. Finite difference. That means I'm going to use a finite approximation to a slope, not an infinitesimal approximation to a slope. All right, I can do that. So dy over dx, which is the actual slope, well, that's approximately equal to y, n plus 1 over y, n over delta x. All right, well, it doesn't matter what n is. I'm going to be able to step, step through this. But what I'm, what I'm doing here, Let's see if I've got a function. Next, this one actually goes the other direction. Looks like that, okay? If I want to know the slope at a point, x, well, that's the exact slope. In order to know the exact slope, I've got to know the exact function. I've got to know that as a closed form uh, expression. I don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, here, there's x of n. There's a x of n plus 1, and in between, well, that's delta x. All right? That's a finite difference. I'm actually going to pick delta x. It's going to be a number, and I'm not going to know what it is. All right? So it's not infinitesimal. It's an actual number. I've assigned it. I have a value for it. There's y of n, and there's y of n plus 1. So if that's small enough, this is close enough to this to work. Well, let's try it. So I'm going to get this out of our way here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this into this, and I'm going to add some subscripts here. So let's do this. y of n plus 1 minus y of n. All 
There it is. Well, is there any XY combination I know? Why, yes, there is. It's right there. All right, so there's that. So if I could just solve for that, I could just step through in, in, in X. So let's just do that. All right, there it is. That is all you need. We'll start at n equals 0. Well, x0 is 0, y0 is 1. So plug all those in. Now I know everything on the right side. I'll figure out y1. Index the counter to 1. To one. Now I know what x1, because that's, that's if I know delta x, I know what all my x's are. I know x1. I, own, I know y1, because I just figured it out. There it is there again. Figure out y2. Go back through here. Figure out y3. Go back through here. Figure out y4. And if you want to know what these are, I've got them tabulated here, the first couple anyway. Let's pick, how far down can I go? That looks pretty good. Let's make delta x really big. 0, 1, and 2. That's too big, but the numbers are nice and round when I do this, so it's, we'll, we'll use that. And this one's going to be 3.732. There. So there's the first couple, and I can just march along an X as far as I want. Well, this is kind of hard to do on a blackboard. Let's switch over and do this in MathCAD. All right, here we are in MathCAD. This is version 15 of MathCAD. And I've typed in a simple little uh, file here that shows us uh, how to solve that same differential equation. And let me just... Uh, walk you through everything in here. Here's n equals 5. That means I want 5 points. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now MathCAD starts its counter at 0 rather than 1. Most pro uh, programs use 1, but MathCAD allows 0. So that's actually point zero right there, and point zero is the initial value. So y1 sub 0 equals 1. Capital N means Newton as a unit. And so right there it's got this little uh, jaggedy uh, green line saying, oh you've redefined something. Yeah, I know. Let's go fix that. Warnings. Eh, I don't know. I'll turn the warnings off and see that goes away now. XF, X sub F, and this is a text subscript, equals 5. That's my the final value of X that I care about. Delta X is XF over N. So you can see that uh, I'll put a equal sign on that. So x and delta x equals 1. n is just a counter variable, a little n, so it goes from 0 to big N. With big N equal 5. And once I know what the, my counter is and I know what delta x is, I know what all my x's are. I can define those right up front, so it's just n times delta x. There's my first value of y1, and y1 is going to be the solution here. Y3 I picked uh, as an uh, output variable for the ordinary differential equation solver that's built into MathCAD. So ODE solve is a function in MathCAD, and we can treat that as essentially the exact answer. So there's my starting point. That's my initial condition right there. Let's just maybe... That's the initial condition. I can't type today. The initial condition I wrote down on the board a minute ago. All right. There's what's called the explicit solution. Now, explicit and implicit are two different kinds of uh, finite dis difference approximations. They're also called forward and backwards differences. So the explicit solution is the one I just put on the board, and that's called a forward difference because we're working working forward in X. There is a, a solution called a backwards difference, and that's called an implicit solution. We'll do that in another, another video. This is enough for now. So there it is. Well, with that, I have the solution to the differential equation. This, this right here is a solve block that gives me the exact solution, or exact-ish. This is really the differential equation solver in MathCAD. It's one of several. 
but we're, I'm going to treat that as a, a close enough to the exact solution. So the red with the uh, circles on it, the red line with the circles, are our finite difference solution, and the blue with the diamonds on it, that's the from the differential differential equation solver in MathCAD. And that's essentially the exact solution. So you can see down here, I've actually got, let's put those over here maybe where we can see them. Okay, those are the x's I've defined. Those are the y's that I've calculated using my forward difference. Now how close are they? Well, pretty close. Well, for a little while. They start to diverge one from the other. Remember, the blue is the solution where the exact solution or exact enough and red is our finite difference approximation. Well how could I get those two to get closer together because the red should sit over the blue. Well when delta x equals 1 my exact slope isn't really that close to my approximate slope. Let's make n bigger. With more points the approximate slope should be closer to the exact slope. And oh look, it is. Now these are getting bigger and bigger. Let me scooch those down out of the way. Um, so th the more points we have, the closer the approximate gets to the exact. Well, if a little bit more is good. A whole lot more ought to be better. Let's go to 20. And now it's closer. Let's go to 50. Ooh, that's closer still. Look at that. You can hardly tell them apart. Let's go to 100. Now, it's awful hard to see with all those points on it, so I'm going to double click and I'm going to turn the symbols off. There. See how the two lines pretty much sit one right on top of the other. In this case, when, when uh, n is equal to 100 and delta x is 0 0.05, the approximate solution is very close to the exact one. So there's how to do a finite difference solution in MathCAD. If you wanted to try it in MATLAB, it wouldn't be much different. It would look uh, more like code rather than this sort of scratch pad layout. But it will work exactly the same way. And those few commands there, and that one right there, would only take a few lines in MATLAB. I hope this helps, and we'll talk to you next time.